to have a look at the Australian standards when it comes to risk management. Now the Australian standard is based on the International Organization for Standardization standard ISO 31000 and it provides a guideline on the principles, framework and the process of risk management for organizations. There are three concepts that I want to focus on in this video from the ISO 31000 standard uh, and these are the principles, the framework and the process that's involved uh, for the risk management in an organization. So let's start with uh, the principles. The principles you can think of as um, an indication of the intention and the purpose of risk management for the organization. And we look at it from the perspective of a risk manager. So you have a risk manager in an organization. What exactly is that risk manager aspiring to achieve for effective risk management? There is, of course, the emphasis of uh, the need to integrate the risk management uh, process in all decision-making aspects and activities of the organization. And that's what the principles sort of focus on. Now, in the, in the, in the ISO 31000 standards, uh, you can see the uh, diagram in front of you. These are the areas in the principles that are focused on. So you've got continual improvement. So this is where risk management is constantly improved um, via learning and experiences that the organization uh, gets. Uh, customized, so each you know, it's it's a general standard. So each organisation they face uh, different uh, issues. So the general concepts can be uh, customised to suit the organisation. Uh, inclusive. So you got to make sure that all stakeholders that are impacted by the project are involved in the process. Uh, human and cultural factors are also an integral part that the standards refer to. So these need to be included in order to make sure that you exactly pinpoint the risks uh, and are able to deal with these, uh, specifically ones that come from human and cultural uh, factors. Dynamic in nature, so it's constantly evolving. Um, and that's because there's new risks that emerge, there's new projects that the organization uh, takes part in and then we have best available information as a principle and that's where historical current and future expectations are utilized in uh, coming up with the risk management process of the organization uh, structured and comprehensive so you ha it has to be structured and it has to be comprehensive to make sure that you know you capture all aspects of risk and finally, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be integrated in all aspects of decision making within the organization. So that was for principles. Moving on to the second concept, the second important concept that's discussed in the, uh, the ISO 31000 standards, and that's the framework. So what's the framework of the risk management process? So the framework, you can think of the framework as not a document, but it's a procedure and it's a procedure that highlights to the organization what needs to be done in order to integrate the risk management process into the decision making. So a lot of people think of risk management as this one separate element that you have to undertake later on in the project. So once you have everything planned for, you then move on to risk management. That's not the case. Uh, risk management in order for it to be correctly implemented has to be integrated in all aspects of the decision making process. And that's what ISO uh, 31000 aims to uh, sort of stress. So the organization, uh, the framework specifies that the organization needs to understand uh, the, its structure and its context. So what are the internal you know, aspects that the organization uh, that the organization is based on? So for instance, the strategic uh, uh, objectives of the organization, the value, the mission of the of the organization, these are all parts of the internal factors. You also have the external factors that the organization has to take into consideration. And, you know, we're looking at uh, sort of, you know, legal aspects, um, t technology and, and how it impacts the organization itself. So these have to all be captured within the framework. 
Now the elements of the framework as specified in ISO 31000, you can see that in front of you. Um, there's integration of course, which is an aspect that we've already talked about. Uh, design, so you know, it's where the, there is a, you know, a commitment that's shown by the organization to establish this, um, you know, committee that looks after the risk management process. And it's usually a process that's um, initiated by top management within the organization. Uh, the assignment of roles is again part of design. So how you design the framework or how you design the risk management process in the organization. You need to assign roles. So different people in the organization have different roles when it comes to risk management. Um, who's the decision maker that you know, uh, determines what sort of action needs to be undertaken for a particular risk that has to be specified. Um, when we're talking about design, we're also looking at, you know, the allocation of resources. So the expertise, uh, people with skills and how these would be allocated to uh, determine, uh, you know, the a, a roadmap for the organization when it comes to uh, identifying and treating risk. And also you have communication and consultation which is important in order to support that framework. So that covers the design aspect of the framework. Moving on to implementation. Um, so the decision-making process, as I, said, as I said, it has to involve that risk, uh, the, the risk analysis and the risk management part. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that the, uh, the decision-making is modified to account for that. So. Uh, now it's all about, you know, thinking of integrating each and every single decision that the organization takes. So integrating risk management into that and not thinking of it as a separate element that you do at the end. Um, we're moving on to evaluation. So this is where you periodically evaluate the risk management framework, um, the performance of the framework, um, and you evaluate it against its purpose. So you initially start off with a purpose. Uh, why you want to, you know, adopt that particular process, that risk management process. And then you have to evaluate, you know, at the end of the project, maybe you have, um, you know, milestones established. So at the end of each milestone, you evaluate, is the risk management process working well? Are you identifying risks in a, in a, in an efficient manner? Is this effective for the organization? Are you able to treat the risks that have been identified? So this is all uh, aspects that are considered in the evaluation part of the framework. And then you have finally improvement. So this is where the organization continually uh, improves and adapts the risk management framework to address internal and external changes that it experiences. So the final uh, concept that's covered in ISO 31000, that's the process of our risk management. And the process, you could think of it as the algorithm. So we've, we've talked about the principle and the principles of the risk management process. We talked about the framework that an organization needs to adopt. And now we're moving on to the process. So how the risk management is to be implemented, how it's structured, the algorithm of the implementation. Um, in the best way of explaining this is uh, through the figure that's given in ISO 31000. And you can see it in front of you on the screen. So you start off with the scope, context, and criteria. And that's where, you know, you look at the external factors, for instance. Um, and I talked briefly about some of these uh, external factors that can influence the organization. Uh, you define the uh, risk criteria that's uh, that's associated with the organization is the organization risk averse is it does it love risks um, what criteria would be set out by the organization in order to assess the risks against so how would you define a high risk versus a low risk you know what's the measure what's the unit of measure that you would use this all has to be defined and it's it has to sort of be customized to suit the organization itself and then you also look at the internal factors that are specific to the organization. So how it's structured, what the values and missions are of the, um, what the mission and the values of the organization are. And this would all form part of the scope, context and, and criteria part of the, of the algorithm that's presented in ISO 31000. Now, moving on to uh, the risk assessment part. And the risk assessment, as you can see, it's formed of uh, three individual components. Uh, risk identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. Let me start off with talking about uh, risk identification. So an organization needs to identify the source of risk. 
uh, I'll give an example. For instance, if, if you had a project, a massive project, multi-million dollar project, and you need to borrow money in order to, um, uh, in order to start with that project, there are certain uh, risks that would be associated with that borrowing of money, right? And so, you know, when you borrow, you'd be exposed to, say, for instance, um, interest rates. So interest rate risk. Uh, the uh, how how that interest rate is fluctuates, or if you're involved in uh, foreign investments, if the organisation is involved in foreign uh, investments in projects outside of Australia, uh, the foreign exchange rate. How how does that impact? You know, there's that risk aspect that you're exposed to as an organisation. So these would all be part of you know the borrowing. Uh, source if you like of, of 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 money so if you borrow money there's the risk that's associated with that borrowing of money and that is uh you know foreign exchange uh fluctuations uh so the the company or the organization has to be aware of that um timing exposure as well so that involves the time value of money um and you know the investments uh opportunity costs of of, of the organization so th these would all be considered uh within you know the risk identification part of of the risk assessment uh the risk analysis that's where um you know depending on on the organization how big it is so usually you know organizations that have the resources have the training and have the expertise they adopt complex uh, procedures for when it comes to risk analysis. So we're talking about maybe Monte Carlo simulations um, in order to analyze the risks. But, you know, organizations that are small can still, you know, implement that risk analysis part. And they do that through, you know, using a, a simplified approach. So depending on, you know, the expertise and, and, and the capacity of the organization, the risk analysis part would, would, would be different. Moving on to uh, risk evaluation, that's where you know the risk appetite of the organization would come into play, um, and it's important because the, at, it, it is at this step where you prioritize your your risks. Um, so these are the three main components involved in the risk assessment, and then finally you move on to risk treatment. So risk treatment is where you know, based on the type of risk and on the severity of the risk, um, you'd have uh, very you'd, you'd have various options of, of treating that risk. You can transfer it to maybe a third party via a contractual agreement. Uh, you can seek to maybe uh, eliminate the risk. Uh, so the risk treatment aspect as well depends on the the organisation itself. So you can customise it to suit the 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 organisation. Now there's there's these other a aspects of the of the process. So you've got monitoring and review, and that's a constant thing that has to be undertaken. Communication and consultation is important to ensure that you're on the right track, that the risk management process is achieving the intended purposes, and then of course recording and reporting in order to reflect on you know the system, how good it is, are you managing risk in the right way. So that's the overall view of the uh, three main concepts that are involved in risk management when it comes to the principles, the framework, and the process as defined by ISO 31000. Thank you.